Hello and welcome to the Tent of Meeting. Come on in, sit down, make yourself comfortable and quiet your mind and heart and, and just relax in God's presence as he speaks into our lives and as we seek his wisdom and his will. The text I'm looking at today comes from the letter of James, which is a only five chapters long, so it's a short letter, and yet it has so much to say to us today. I'm going to be reading from chapter 3, verse 1, and so if you have a Bible beside you, open it up, read it with me. I'm reading from the NIV, although you may be using a different version, so it may read slightly differently. It comes under the heading, Taming the Tongue, James chapter 3, reading from verse 1. Not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man. But no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives? Or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Amen. We all have access to a powerful weapon that can be used in any situations to make things better or worse. Our words. Anyone with the ability to say the right thing at the right time or, or to keep from saying the wrong thing at the wrong time is gifted in wisdom. The Bible warns us that it is impossible to have complete control over our tongue. It says in verse 8, nobody can tame the tongue. But it also tells us how we can manage our tongue and speak in such a way that our conversations give glory to God. Because that's what's important. Changing your words can literally change your life. So let me draw it to your attention the four things we can discern from today's text. Firstly, be aware of the damage you can cause with words. One of the biggest lies we tell our children is that sticks and stones may break your bones but names will never hurt you. I've often wondered, and I'm sure you have too, if that's true, then why do words cause so much pain? If we look at social media today, there is so much vitriol nowadays that it can destroy lives. And tragically, it has all too often. I think that's because those who spout their venom are not held to account for their actions. And so they believe they can say anything they want. And they simply don't care about the impact their words will have. They don't care about anybody else. So the words we say create most of the problems we face. Most conflicts between parents and children are not the result of a generation gap. They're often the result of words. 
Parents who perhaps have spent 16 years belittling their children with harsh words or negative words, constantly putting them down, pulling them down. And then they wonder why their kids suddenly rebel with so much hostility, so much anger. Our words can carry tremendous weight and they can cause enormous damage. In Proverbs 12 and verse 18 it says, Reckless words pierce like a sword. That's exactly what the New Testament writer James means when he says in verse 6, The tongue is a fire. We need to be reminded over and over of the fact that our words are weapons. They have the power to destroy. Secondly, words can't be taken back. When you were a child, did you ever say something that you had to take back? I remember once in school, someone said something cruel about a girl. He said it because she wore the glasses you got in the National Health Service, which were had pink frames. It certainly didn't look very nice. And she also had braces in her teeth. And when he said it, the whole class laughed, except the girl. The teacher was cross and made the boy take it back. And so he walked over to the girl's desk and he mumbled, I take it back. That girl just stared down at her book. Too little, too late. It was plain to see he didn't mean his words. Her feelings were hurt and nothing he said could change it. You see, words once spoken can never be taken back. They're a bit like a tube of toothpaste. Once you squeeze the tube and the toothpaste oozes out and it comes out, you can't put it back in. There's a story about a woman who had spread malicious gossip about a neighbour. In confession, she told her priest about her sin and asked what she could do to make it right. He told her to pluck a chicken and place a feather by the gate of the house of each person with whom she had spread the gossip and then come back to him the next day. So she did it. And when she came back, he then said, Now, go to each house and pick up the feather you left there. The woman said, But father, that's impossible. By now those feathers have blown all over town. The priest responded, and so have your words. At a wedding I once conducted, I tried to give the couple some advice about married life. And I stressed that a strong relationship requires us to remember to say two little but also important words. They are thank you and sorry. Sorry is the hardest word to say. Of course Elton John got it right in his song. And young couples need to know, if they don't already, that yes, they'll have their fallouts, because most couples do. But once words, once harsh words are spoken, they can't be taken back. So I counselled them to be mindful of this. Thirdly, your words reveal a lot about you. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, in verse 34, Jesus says, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In other words, whatever is in your heart eventually comes out of your mouth. If your heart is critical and cold and bitter, your words will be too. James says in verse 12, Can a fig tree bear olives? Or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Our words reveal our true character. They reveal the state of our heart. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 12. It says a fool is consumed by his own lips. At the beginning his words are folly. At the end they are wicked madness. And the fool multiplies his words. Our words betray us, but the Bible teaches us that just as your words reveal your character, 
so too changing your character begins with changing your words. Go back to verse 2. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he's a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. Do you have trouble with what you say or how you say it? Well, the Bible's clear in its teaching. It starts by controlling your tongue. Proverbs 21 and verse 23. He who guards his mouth and his tongue keeps himself from calamity. You have better chances of salvaging a tense situation if you use softer language. So changing your character begins by changing your words. In verse 26, James says, If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on their tongue, they deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. That phrase, keeping a tight rein on your tongue, comes down to a fairly simple formula. Firstly, work on avoiding negative or hurtful words. And two, increase the number of positive and uplifting and affirming words. Remember, though, that James warns us that no one can tame the tongue. So if and when you fail, you don't need to beat yourself up about it. You just need to keep trying. Challenge yourself to say something positive about everything all the time. It's a big challenge, but it's worth the effort. I remember speaking to someone about, we were talking about how rude older people can be to younger people. And yet you often hear that it's the older people who complain about the young I think there's wisdom in seeing that both can be equally hurtful with their tongue. So please don't think it doesn't apply to you. We all have the potential to do great good with our words or great harm. They are a powerful weapon. That potential good and that potential harm is not only directed at others but at ourselves. Our spiritual health is determined to a great extent by the words we say. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10, Whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. And so friends, God's word for today is clear. And unambiguous. Change your words. And you will change your character. And your life. And that. Is what will then be pleasing. To God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father thank you once again for. For the wise teaching we find in scripture. Help us to have the humility to look into ourselves, to look at ourselves in the mirror before we point fingers at others. May we always be mindful of the damage harsh or gossiping words can do. Father, your word, your teaching is as clear as crystal in this matter. And so, Heavenly Father, may we apply your word in our lives. Grant us the wisdom to understand your word and to apply it. We ask this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen.